ago. Well, I went to NYU for a bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD in um, biology, actually, in cell physiology, which has become molecular biology. And while I was in graduate school, just beginning, my professor suggested that I work for a Dr. W. J. V. Osterhout, who was at Rockefeller University. And I went there as a technician, and he spent all of his summers in Woods Hole. He was one of the early, he was 90 when I worked for him, and he was one of the early residents of summer program in Woods Hole. And I've been coming, except for hiatus of 20 years in between, ever since then. And that was a long time ago, about 60 years ago. Yeah, I came back and I took the physiology course while I was working with him. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a real mentor. He made sure that everything worked out. And his wife, Marian Osterhout, who was very well known, so who was also a scientist. He was working on a plant here called Nitella, and he was studying the effect of salts on, on the osmosis and on the movement of the granules within the, the cell vacuum, within the cell itself. I went into uh, cell physiology with W. J. V. Osterhout, who was also a teacher in the physiology course. Uh, well, I guess I started out being interested in cancer research. And one thing led to another, and I just went to graduate school. And in those days, you could just go into school and get a job and do <laughs> research and go on from there. I went into science writing, and I spent 15 years about writing about molecular biology, mostly for genetic engineering use and for biotechnology. Writing when AIDS was first discovered and there was an enormous controversy and it was a very exciting time. I haven't thought about that for a while, but the articles I wrote were the seminal articles that they published on, on the AIDS controversy and I insisted that they accept the view that it was caused by a virus and they published that article and within a month after that it became a known fact. Otto Warburg, who was a Nobel Prize winner, had a theory about the number of quanta of light energy needed for photosynthesis. And his theory was objected to by various people, and they, came, they all came together to Woods Hole to the physiology course in the summer of 1949 to uh, prove his theory, essentially, or disprove it. And I was in the course at that time, along with Woody Hastings, who's still here in Woods Hole. Oh, well, the first thing is that the, the course was given in the old wooden building, which doesn't exist anymore. It's now a quadrangle. And there were about 12 students in the class, and there was one sink, which we all used. And when Varberg showed up, the sink was divided in half with a big wooden board, and faucets on each side, and a sign was put up on the board that said, this half of the sink reserved for Varberg's Varberg's. And the Warburgs were the instruments that we used to measure the oxygen production. And so, so that was really kind of amazing. Oh yeah, then, then Warburg was supposed to give a lecture to describe why he believed that four quanta of energy were the correct number. And um, he didn't give the lecture. He felt his English wasn't good enough. And he asked a young scientist named Victor Schocken to give the lecture for him. And Victor got up and gave an introduction and he said, uh, Barbara felt his English wasn't good enough. So uh, during the presentation, I'm reading from the book, Victor said, and this is a quote from, from the information I gave for the book. Um, Victor said, Dr. Warburg believes that the number of quanta required is four. 
And at this point, Warburg leaped to his feet and he said, what do you mean I think? I know. <laughs> and the rest is history. He was wrong. <laughs>